Okay, y'all. I just finished this conversation with Chris Holly, <laughs> and I am telling you, this is something you do not want to miss. Um, we had a good talk. We almost went to church in here, <laughs> uh, but it was good conversation. Learned so much about him that I did not know. And um, I believe that in watching this story, you're going to learn something about yourself or someone that you love and that your life is going to be better on the other side of it. So join us. We want to give a special thanks to our sponsors. John Travis, a financial coach and certified kingdom advisor with Richard Young Associates, a registered investment advisor. We'd also like to thank Sense of Satisfaction by Cricket and Paul H. Bush, the burning bush. Please note that the views and opinions expressed on this program may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors. It's time to hear the story, make the connection, learn the lesson, and gain the wisdom. Are you ready? Let's get charged and be changed. The Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Conversations on grace, healing, and deliverance. This is Marcy Bush. Come on, let's journey together. Hello, and thank you for joining us today for the Sister Speak Brother Break Show. As I always say, and as I always mean, we have a very special guest with us today. And um, this man is a husband, a father, um, an, an uncle, a big brother, all of those things. He's a pastor, um, a business owner, but today he is going to put all that to the side and just tell us about the man and his experiences. And so I want you all to get prepared to be blessed by Christopher Holly. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, we have been, I guess, just thinking about the different people in our area that we know, whether very intimately or kind of know of or have become more acquainted with over the years. Absolutely. And um, you were one of the ones that came to mind. And I'm just so grateful for what God has done in your life. I know I see the results of what he's done but I, because i've i've been in places where i've been able to experience the anointing that's on your life mm -hmm. but i know that the anointing comes from something Absolutely. so like i don't know the backstory so that's that's why we're here today to find out your backstory gotcha <laughs> so we're gonna start at the beginning um tell me about little chris <laughs> Little Chris. Okay, well, I was raised by my grandmother, Mary Craig. Okay. And Mary Craig Doe when she got later married later. Okay. Um, but I was raised by her. Mm -hmm. I'm the son of Kathleen Holly and Willie McDuffie. Okay. Um, but basically, like I said, my grandmother raised me and my cousin together. Okay. And um, in her home, had a interesting childhood, I guess. My dad went in the military at some point. She let me go with him to Virginia. Moved okay. to Virginia for about a year, a year and a half. And then after that, we went to Germany. So I oh, most really? people know I spent two and a half years in Germany. Okay. Now, at what age did you go with your dad? Around what age? I was about second, third grade. Okay. And uh, yeah, because I came back from Germany around the fifth grade. Okay. And whatnot. So, but you grew up in the home with your grandma. Right. The first year, the first younger years. years. And, then and so now, Germany, because. Back I, with her. Huh, okay. Yep. So I know that your grandma was a dynamic evangelist <laughs> absolutely um one of the best if i must say so much <laughs> yes so did you get did you was she a preacher when you were little right okay yeah. so she was already mm -hmm. a preacher because I, I of course i like i cannot remember when ever since i knew her she was preaching right yeah but i didn't know when she started i'm not exactly sure what year or when she when she started preaching but it okay. was during that early period of my childhood okay that she did but so you were a church baby all the time okay i was sharing at work the other day i was drug i was a drug baby <laughs> drug to church because before she started preaching she was singing Oh, really? Her and her mom and her dad sung together. Okay. And so every choir anniversary. Gotcha. Every church that had a service. <laughs> uh-huh. So we would leave the house early morning, 
time to go to church. Church starting at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But we'll leave, get there for Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And it'll be almost, particularly during uh, winter months, mm -hmm. it'll be dark okay. when we get back to the house. Because okay. you don't went to three or four services uh -huh. in one day. Gotcha. So people don't do that no more. Mm -mm. Oh, no. <laughs> for sure they don't. So then you went with your dad. Were, mm -hmm. How did you feel when you were you like, so did you have a lot of interaction with your dad, even though you live with your grandma? Yeah, he was always around pretty much. Um, he didn't stay with us, but he was in and out. So I always had somewhat of a relationship with him, mm -hmm. but um, it wasn't the best of. Mm -hmm. Well, that's later on in life. Okay. But in the early years, I was kind of nervous, scared when I first moved with him. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't really comfortable because um, it was him and my stepmom. Bernie. Okay at the time and she always treated me beautifully but mm -hmm. it was just you know with him I was a little nervous okay him being a man having that authority right um, that didn't have earlier and right. now you got that and so um, but it was a good experience as well okay. once, once we got past a few humps it was a few humps along the way okay so went to where did you say first Virginia first and then Germany then Germany Osberg Germany okay and then you came back mm-hmm and how did you end up back with grandma? Well, when we came back, my dad and my stepmom were separating. Okay. And so we had a three year tour that we were supposed to do in Germany, but me and her only stayed like two and a half years and my baby sister. Okay. And so we came back and grandma picked me up from the airport or bus station, one of them, whatever we came back on. Mm -hmm. Came back through to here and I was with her ever since. Okay. Um, there wasn't no question where I was going. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she had already said that, bring it back. Okay. So, Yep. So what did it look like when you got back? Because by then you're about how old? Uh, fifth grade. Okay. So what's that? 11? Yep. 12, yep. Right there. around 11, 10, 11. About 10, 11. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was uh, a little different catching back up with friends that mm -hmm. you haven't seen in five years or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, getting familiar with everybody. Got in trouble like the first or second day <laughs> that I was at school. Because oh, I asked the guy what time we get out of school. Mm -hmm. And he told me one time. And so... I asked the teacher and she said something else and so I called him a liar pretty much. But okay. <laughs> and some okay. colorful language. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> and kinda got in trouble like the second day of first or second day of school. And um but it, it you know we So did right that set up. the tone or did you shake it? Oh, I kinda set the tone. I kinda I kinda had a you know, my middle school years and high school years, they had it was filled with some ups and downs. Okay. And so my childhood it's was kinda you know, I was between New Ellerton Dry Branch, which they both same like community. five minutes yeah. apart. However, yeah, yeah, there's a different a little difference because you know you're not driving or anything, so you don't see the same friends every day. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it was kind of difficult, I guess, growing up in that aspect of it during the summertime and whatnot. You want right. to go to New Ellerton and hang out because mm -hmm. my maternal grandmother she lived there okay. in New Ellerton, and that was the place you wanted to be. Yeah. Um, she was strict, but she was she gave you some freedoms, mm -hmm. and plus she worked. <laughs> okay. So she wasn't home to keep uh -huh. up with us all the time. So we mm -hmm. would want to go there and just and freelance and do what we want to do. <laughs> oh, right. oh, freelance. I like yeah, that term. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one. Not, not, not when you're wanting to do your own thing like yeah. that as a kid. Freelance. But not at me lies. Like she that. wasn't doing that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. Miss Mary Lies wasn't playing that. No, she was real strict, real stern. Um, loving, mm -hmm. but, you know, she didn't abuse or misuse right, mis right. or nothing like that. But she was just... She was stern. Okay. When she said something, she meant it. Yeah. And so my, one of my first interactions with that experience was she told me to come home from school. Mm -hmm. Well, my aunt Mickey lived mm -hmm. on um, South Boundary right across from Greendale. Mm -hmm. So I left, um, we was at middle school, and I took the bus to Mickey House. I okay. figured I could go to Mickey House, but I could go anywhere. <laughs> Man, Grandma came up there. Oh my! Oh my! <laughs> I told you to come home. That's yeah, hey, entertainment for the neighborhood. Right there, was she? Right, right there. It was <laughs> man, man. Mickey was like, "Well, my, my mama, he was like, right. no, nah, I told him to come home." Okay. And uh, yeah, and Grandma, she was preaching and evangelist and all that, but she would use some colorful <laughs> language to get her point across. To, <laughs> uh huh. I told you to bring your a home. Uh -huh. I meant for you to get. Okay. <laughs> so it was okay. like, yeah. Yeah. yeah so. And she wasn't no little lady. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> and she was left handed. Oof. I had to find that out too. Mercy. My mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, yeah sounds like it was because um, in New Ellington, and of course everybody who's watching won't know where all the places are and mm -hmm. some will, but in New Ellington it was more of 
you could kind of walk where you wanted to go because it was right. so many side streets and yeah, up yeah. this way Paths and down. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on dry branches, kind of more road. of a, yeah. Yep. You go up this way to go to Sean them house or, <laughs> or you go to the next door a couple of houses, but that was mm -hmm. it. Just one road down. But New Ellington, you, you could really get into a lot. All over New Ellington. <laughs> from, from Society Hill, mm -hmm. which is South Boundary, mm -hmm. up to our hill, Pine Street, Long Street. Noobs. All over. Noobs. Yep. But Noobs and what's, came later. <laughs> okay. You say it came later. Well, for us. Okay. For going out, hanging out. Okay. Noobs, but as a kid. And now, what's the street? My aunt Dot lives on what's that? Long Street. Long Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, yeah all we played them. basketball across from her all the time back okay. there behind Simo House. Okay, that was the dirt court. Okay, and we'd be back there all, uh, playing so, basketball and stuff. So you had just a plethora of things to get into down in New Ellis. Oh yeah, we didn't have a boring childhood. <laughs> I, these kids nowadays, I don't see how they can make it right. on video games. But, okay, I mean we fixed bikes, road bikes, just whatever, however. So when did things begin to, when did you start, I guess, because we all don't do something mama or daddy see it, mm -hmm. but when did things start to kind of take a different path? I would say about ninth grade, probably about midway through ninth grade. Um, started out, was on the JV football team, and I should have knew then, but in hindsight, you start to recognize mm -hmm. stuff now. Um, was on the football team there and you couldn't hit the quarterback in practice. Okay. And so I'm playing defensive end. I'm getting off. I get to the quarterback. I tackle him. Okay. So coaches just like got all in my face yelling and screaming about you don't hit the quarterback this that and the other and the quarterback he mad. And it was one of those things I mean you ain't gonna talk to me like that so I quit. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and this would have been when we had this was a championship like back to back. Yeah, I would have had two state championships okay. if I would have stuck out in, in, okay. in high school. Probably okay. three because I could have helped them win another. <laughs> Listen <laughs> at you. <laughs> but, but it was at that time that you know I guess I really had a problem with authority mm -hmm. and being told and it was just I guess the manner Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be showing up, mm -hmm. getting all in my face, and mm -hmm. so I bowed back up okay. and ended up quitting. And so now I got time on my hand, mm -hmm. and I'm going home on the bus after school, right? And just didn't make some of the right decisions. Well, okay. a lot of didn't make a lot of right decisions, and uh, so I guess somewhere along ninth grade started dabbling, selling drugs, okay, because that became a thing. Mm -hmm. um, crack was big in our communities okay um and we know we can go all into the, how the cia started that and planted it mm -hmm. all in the black communities and stuff like that but mm -hmm. nat bells on right. uh, on 278 mm -hmm. that was the prominent spot that's where everybody went yes. and um it was a big hub for crack dealers and mm -hmm. police were raided like two or three times in one day okay and so they finally shut nat bells down mm -hmm. and so then that drove that traffic off into other communities so, yeah, Jackson, that traffic moved down to new ellerton that's when crack picked up really mm -hmm. in that community okay. and so you had people started selling and then you out there and you're looking and you say okay I might be able to do that and mm -hmm. so then you get brought into that game mm -hmm. and so I would say about the ninth grade I started selling crack cocaine okay and uh it was I was so engrossed in it that I didn't realize my dad was my dad had came home by, by that time okay he wasn't staying with us but he was in the area and he had some struggles. My dad had struggled with substance abuse. Okay. Um, he told me one time, he said, man, you don't have to do no drugs. I did enough for you. Mm. And um, so he was telling me his story. But then later, he told me, he said, yeah, I remember one time coming through New Ellerton. You don't even look to see who you got in cars. You sold me some drugs one time. Oh, wow. He was like in the back seat. But yeah. we would deal with the driver. Okay. And so we had to serve whoever wow. came through. And he said he was in the car. And he said, you didn't even recognize who was in the car. Mm. And I didn't. You really, mm -hmm. you know, you just, how much you want. And you after the mm -hmm. money and so I had that experience there um, started selling drugs started fighting you know we had our Dodge City Posse okay and um, so we was getting into things is they're more now gang related stuff mm -hmm. we was kind of like a gang but we wasn't you didn't take no now what was the gang in. that was in New Ellington that day the baby gorillas baby gorillas they they was birthed out of us okay so Dodge City Posse then we had younger guys okay. that we wouldn't let hang with us 
Okay. So we started calling them uh, Baby Gorilla. Okay. And they took it to a whole new level. Okay. And so it, it was at a point where we didn't even really deal with them. Okay. Um, and see, what's funny though, Chris, even sitting here talking to you, I'm thinking about just how naive. Mm -hmm. I know for me, even when I think back to my high school years now, I mean, you might have heard, you, of course, there would be a fight here or there. Mm -hmm. Weed. That's what I'm, you know, I'm just thinking folk, yeah, some of them be smoking weed or some. When I'm thinking selling, I was thinking selling weed. Mm. I wasn't even <laughs> like thinking selling crack. Yeah. Um, seriously, I wasn't. Like I said, when you know the little um, more, more and more fights started happening or whatever. And then so I was probably by that time, if you were going up through high school, I was off to college. Right. Um, cause I did my first year and a half in Columbia and then I came back to Aiken, but I wasn't around New Ellington a lot. So even list talking to you now mm -hmm. is like, where was I? <laughs> because I didn't, I mean, I think even later when some of my brothers talked to me, still you looking through rose colored lenses right. and you're thinking, yeah, something wrong. They be drinking a lot. They probably be doing some weed. Didn't know people didn't all around know. us was crackheads. Yeah, crack, yeah. Did not know. Just thinking, granddaddy be spending all that money on week on a, in a weekend all that money yeah. gone. Not that, just money. I've seen them come through with their kids' bed. Uh, selling their bed. Mm. Yeah, I got this bed. I got a twin size bed. TVs, guns, mm -hmm. microwaves, whatever they can get out of the house. Mm hmm And it was um Fishing equipment. Really? You know, you in it, so it don't really, you just, it's part of the game. Mm -hmm. But then once you get out of that and you start to look back, right. you recognize how much damage is done, right. how many lives are affected. And, right. um, and really, to be selling drugs, you don't wreck, you, you after the money. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's the money and then the prestige that goes along mm -hmm. with it because, you know, you got clothes and shoes. I didn't get the cars and all that. Because mm -hmm. even though I did it, I wasn't all that good at it. Okay. Everything I was selling and making, <laughs> I was spending. Okay. <laughs> but people kind of look up to drug dealers mm -hmm. and idolize them. Mm -hmm. And so you start, it's more the power aspect right. of it than even the money. Right. But when you so look at So you're not focusing it, on the life. Yeah. You're not. You're not. And you're taking advantage of weak-minded people. Mm -hmm. Because when people get addicted, it's a right. sickness. They can't. Right. Know, after they taking their hit or whatever, regret sets in. They mm -hmm. wish they hadn't have done it, mm -hmm. but then they back in ten minutes or fifteen right. minutes because they need another fix. Yes. And you know, I'm not proud of that aspect of life. And I look back and I've repented for that thing yes. several times yes. because I recognize that you know the lives that you impact. Right. You think you're just dealing with this one individual, right? Because you got you narrow minded, mm -hmm. you got short vision. Mm -hmm. But it's a child at home, yeah. a spouse at home, right? Right. Um, whatever the case might be. So, mm -hmm. you know, we we took advantage of people. Right. Is what I look at it as now. And again, when you're in it, it don't seem like it. But when exactly. you can take a step back and you can reflect, yeah. That's why you know we say it in church all the time. When I look back over my life. Honey. <laughs> But I think a lot of people just saying it, they're not really looking back. But if you ever take that time. <laughs> if you ever take the time to look yes, back. Yes, you know, yes, yes. So it, it is. It's, it's, it's rough. And so during that time when you, do you remember the first time you ever saw? I don't remember the first time. Or who, like, do you, without names, of course. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, do you remember, like, who drew you that way or who you went to like hey I can do this do you remember the beginning or it's foggy it's kind of I don't remember exactly who was the first one to say okay this is what we're gonna do it's kind of like you saw it come in and you saw other people start to do it and what they was wearing and the clothes and stuff they was getting mm -hmm. off of it and then you kind of like all right you know I got fifty dollars put me in the put me mm -hmm. in the game okay and um, and so I don't I don't know for sure who. And so you said um, the traffic came from Nat Bell's, which was Beach Island, Beach which Island. was 15 minutes from New Ellington. Mm -hmm. And and so when they shut that down, 
whoever was that way kind of migrated y'all's way to start finding yeah, it, well, actually, response. it was people like from New Ellington that were selling, but okay. they would go there and set oh, up and sell. Okay. And because that was like the central hub. Mm -hmm. But then when they because sometimes down, you couldn't hardly drive through there, there would be so right, many cars. Be, I mean, literally, they would raid it five o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and they'd be back at eight o'clock at night raiding it again. Mm. And because pe people have come right back, yes. And that's just the power of that drug; it was mm -hmm. calling them back. And so people that left New Ellington to go up there to sell. Once they shut it down, okay. said, okay, we can set up a safe space here mm -hmm. and got the customers to start coming in. Okay. A lot of the customers was from there. Right. So it just... Were there legit crack houses in New Ellington? Or people just pretty much got it and went to their own house? Yeah, they pretty much got it and went spot. to their own house. It was a few spots you could stop into that you knew that they would congregate at, but it wasn't like a per se crack house like okay. you would see on TV or something okay. to that effect. And so did your people... I mean, I know they had to know, but like I said, those rose colored lenses, mm -hmm. what, was there any doubt about what you were doing with well, your family? My grandmother, she started looking and noticing stuff because she knew what clothes she bought mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I would buy shoes and uh, Raider jackets, mm -hmm. Miami Hurricanes, all that was famous, mm -hmm. uh, were popular. And I would buy that stuff, but I couldn't take it home, so I would leave okay. it over my other grandma's house. Okay. And um, but then she would see me in the streets and see me with stuff on. She was mm -hmm. like, "I didn't buy that," and I'd be like, "This lean on." Uh, okay. <laughs> That's my brother. Uh huh. And so I, you know, and then one day we were sitting there. I had came home for something, and she was like, challenging me because I was on street corners and. And she was telling me what they were doing in the streets. And I was like, well, Grandma, just because you're in the street don't mean you're doing it. I mm -hmm. said, you know, she said, well, birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. And her and uh, Sissy um, Green, mm -hmm. Sandra Green, mm -hmm. they were always, what y'all doing on this corner? What y'all, okay. you know, they would always challenge us. And so Grandma's thing was birds of a feather flock together. I'm like, mm -hmm. Grandma, no, nah, I promise you, I ain't doing nothing. I know better than mm -hmm. that, this, that, nothing. And so she had that discernment. She had mm -hmm. discerning spirit. She knew something mm -hmm. wasn't right. And she would press it, but I would lie about it. Mm -hmm. And then one day I came home and she was in the kitchen. And uh, I came through the back door. We didn't use front doors. She came in the back door. Mm -hmm. And she said, I thought, I thought you told me you wasn't out there selling drugs. And I said, no, Grandma, I told you I don't do that. And I said, just because I'm out there don't mean, you know, mm -hmm. other people might be doing it. Don't mean I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. She said, well, read that and tell me what it says. And so they sent a warrant to the house because I was a juvenile okay. for distribution of crack cocaine. And I had a family court date that I had to go meet and everything. Okay. And um, so I'm looking at that, and I'm like, oh, they got the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm still lying. Uh huh. And so we going through, and then and she said, me, me and my brothers, all us look alike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got the wrong person. That it wasn't me. So we get to court then, and they and the family court it operates a little different than general sessions and all of that. So they appointed me a little lawyer, and. Um, he goes through and gets this evidence. He called me and my grandma in the room. He said, well, look, they said, you had on this, 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 this. this. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but I'm telling them, no, nah, that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. So we can get out here and hopefully mm -hmm. that something will happen, like they'll throw it out. Right. But um, ended up that I got convicted of that charge. Okay. And because I was a juvenile, again, I look back over my life and I give God glory. Mm -hmm. Because I was a juvenile, I only did 30 days oh, okay. in a... Um, in the detention center in, okay. in Columbia, it was R and E at the time. Okay. Um, I forgot what they call it. Um, Something I, in it. But it's like the intake. Yeah. yeah. So they they take you there for thirty days, mm -hmm. and then depending on how you act during those thirty days, okay. the recommendation can come to extend time okay. or to send them back on probation. Gotcha. So when my time was over, I went back on probation. And you were about how old at this time? This time I was 16. Okay. I actually turned 17 in the juvenile okay. correction. Okay. And um, had I been 17. It would have been different. I would have been different. Because mm. a friend of mine was actually, me and him got caught up in the same time. Mm -hmm. He was already 17. Mm. And they sentenced him to 40 years. Ooh. Right. 40 years. <laughs> His initial sentence was 40 years. But the judge called him back in the next day. And said, man, I, I've thought about you all night. And he reduced his sentence. I forgot what, what, how many years he reduced it by. But he ended up doing seven years. And you did 30 days. I did 30 days. You better lift your hands you and tell about? the Lord thank you. <laughs> how Woo. many times? Have yes. you, once you look back over it. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Over and over, you've thanked God for Absolutely. keeping you. 
But you would have thought that would have been enough. Okay. But it was. So them 30 days, you just <laughs> did what you were supposed to do to get out? To get out, to get back, to get back into the same rut. Inside, you have a mentality change. You say, you know what, well, I'm going to do the right thing when I get out okay. of here. And you try to walk the right path, but it's, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so you find yourself slipping right back into it. Mm -hmm. um, I was blessed enough not to get caught up in any more dealings or anything like that. And, um, and then eventually it just ran this course and you realize okay. if I get caught up with this, mm -hmm. you know, this time is real. Right. Seen some friends go off to jail for it. And so we just eventually faded away from that aspect of it. But mm -hmm. I had that stint in my life that I'm not proud of. Right. But I do look at it to see that it was what made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what other... Like, so you said you were 16, you turned 17 when you were in there, mm -hmm. came out, and so by then you're like 11th, 11th or 12th grade? Then when I came back, I was in the 11th grade. Okay. Yep. So now when you went at 30 days, was it during school, during the summer? When was oh, yeah, it? I was during school. Okay. So I had to take what courses they gave me there, um, and then some of the credits, they allowed me to come back and I could take. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you've been blessed by today's show, feel free to let us know. And if you'd like to sow into this ministry, become a sponsor or contact us. You can reach us at 803-221-0169. Or you can email us at the SSBB show at gmail.com. Let's continue this journey together missed any of our past episodes the pain that i've gone through i've been through lots <laughs> depression perversion low self-esteem rejection but i'm here and i'm loving life and i'm changed forever oh. trying to maim you to leave you like to physically and mentally I maim you he wanted your life I don't think he so much wanted my life is that he wanted some results. He wanted me to stay in the earth and not be who I am now. Piece where you start talking about it was your love walk. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we had an opportunity to not only share our experience, but find out that there were so many women in the room who had similar experiences. What advice would you give to people who find themselves in the grips of grief right now? Um. The pain is inevitable, but the suffering is optional. You were still mm. sick, you still weren't well, but did something change for you when they gave it a name? Yes, because um, once they put a label on it, I felt like it was putting a label on me. Mm. We're in the class, and the first thing this guy says when he comes in the room, he starts pointing. Dead, dead, oh. dead, dead, to everybody in the room. So he started talking about you know, you an alcoholic, you an alcoholic. And I said, I ain't no alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. So I said, I'm an alcoholic. Never, I said it. But you still it, didn't believe it. I said it just so I could get out the class. Yeah. I still didn't think I was no alcoholic. So when did you realize you were? After I got delivered. Oh my God. Catch up on past shows on my YouTube channel at Marcy Bush, M-A-R-C-E-Y-B-U-S-H. And be sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes.